Assalamualaikum. Warmly welcome back after a lunch and tea break and prayer break. So we have uh, another topic. 1.2 is all about regulating health and safety. But in 1.1, we share uh, moral and you know some of the reasons why we truly need to manage health and safety at the workplace. So now we are going to discuss some of the legal regulatory requirements. And that would also highlight a reason to manage health and safety system. You know. So re regulating a, a health and safety for a business, uh, you know, uh, even if you're going to open one company, so plenty of uh, legal laws you need to follow, a lot of licenses you need to get from your uh, local government, from uh, expanding your business globally, you might need some certain kind of certifications or approvals uh, just to ensure your global presence you know like if you want to sell something in Europe and made in Saudi Arabia so definitely the European regulations would be more important to follow and if uh, some of the American brands are working with your company so you truly need to respect American regulations so let's understand how Nibosh is guiding us you know uh, uh, for regulating the health and safety uh, because there are legal reasons for managing workplace health and safety, like most countries have health and safety laws. In Saudi Arabia, we have uh, safety laws for several segments. Failure to achieve legal minimum standards can lead to prosecution. And several companies, uh, you'll be noticing up, you know, especially in Saudi Arabia, if they are not uh, following even the precautions uh, Saudi government under Minister of Health implemented against COVID-19 or coronavirus, their companies are shut down actually. Maybe for one month, maybe for two months, maybe for one week, but surely uh, they are facing some fine policy or even as per uh, Saudi regulations might be some time penalized in the court as well. Now, but let's talk about some of the international frameworks, especially ILO, the International Labor Organization. Um, just for your information, it's an agency of United States. Like we have OSHA, we have ILO, we have IATC, we have API, we have NFPA, we have ASTM, several, we have NIOSH even. So several kind of uh, uh, international bodies are there, especially from USA even from your, even from UK, you know, even from Australia as well. But the most important part is which are the globally uh, recognized or respected bodies and IEL is one of the, one of them, you know, because uh, almost all the countries uh, are uh, member of ILO and they oblige and they commit to follow and respect ILO regulations. And they have two domains, conventions, and recommendations. Whenever we refer anything relevant to conventions, so we truly need to remember like C155, convention number 155 is all about relevant to occupational health and safety regulations. And R164 of ILO recommendations is relevant to again, occupational health and safety regulations. So two, two set of uh, conventions and uh, recommendations we can study, one C155 and R164. Even some of the other would also be relevant, but these are the most uh, incorporated that is highlighted by Nibosh also. And what is conventions? Uh, it's kind of uh, creating obligations or policies to implement the provisions and no legal authority unless ratified by the member state into its own legal structure. The recommendations uh, provide guidance on policy, legislation, and practice. And uh, to be very honest, the most important word is the practice. No standards, SOPs, policies, you know, any legislation would be helpful if we don't follow, if we don't practice actually. So uh, the real thing is the implementation. And to be very honest, as a uh, as a practical safety professional, what I noted, sometimes the companies are ideally sound and uh, so much productive, but in shape of documentation. 
but the moment you go and visit their uh, project sites same like me as an as a safety auditor sometime uh, you will think you know you will definitely see and observe entirely a different uh, uh, nature of uh, safety system like in documentation they are ideally productive all the way around they have record for everything and the moment you go on site things would be entirely out of the standard you know uh, let me give you one example during one audit uh, i asked to the safety department can you share with me some of the records related to your forklift number 009 and the just last three months record the current one and the moment i observed not all pages just few of the inspection checklist and i verified everything was 100% tick and that was the point where i thought uh, something something is not good into this company because might be they are just uh, fulfilling the value of files but on ground things could be uh, entirely in a different shape and then i asked to the uh, safety officer can i see that uh, forklift uh, physically and to be very honest guys uh, the uh, safety belt was not buckling up uh, tires quality was terribly poor horn was not working the back of warnings and all that and most importantly the forks you know which are going to lift the load they were just wobbling up and uh, the body the paint of the forklift the, the body paint it was uh, having a lot of scratches maybe hit to the pillars to the walls maybe sometime to the machines even so a lot of near misses unreported i can claim there but in the report everything was 100% tick that no issue is there even i noted a few drops of oil you know kind of uh, so uh, then i uh, then i talked to the forklift operator how come you can just simply tick do you know what you are ticking so he replied no i don't know what i am ticking because i don't know english actually then why you are ticking and that's what the safety department told me to do just take and send us one copy you know for our record and keep one with you actually so uh, what's the benefit what's the benefit and the whole benefit is going to the maintenance department because no work order for them or no third party like we have signed contract for third party inspections and maintenance uh, companies are there but what if we don't report internally and creating a a kind of work order for maintenance and maintenance of course they will call to the third party or maybe under supervision of safety department at least they will call for sure you know to maintain that forklift but the moment you have a document with 100% tips that everything is okay there is no reason behind to uh, call a maintenance team actually because the objective evidence is uh, sharing and highlighting nothing is wrong so guys such kind of system is not beneficial at all i'm telling you okay you can play with the customers you can play with auditors but you will lose your trust you know once your customers got familiarization that you are a, a fake uh, documentation maker company on the other side uh, that trust would be surely broken up you know so what i mean is you you reduce the documentation you make your documentation smart enough because over documentation sometimes make people irritated so you find out a way how you can create a smart documentation system so everybody can easily stop check and move on uh, with better uh, uh, real implementation rather than the fake implementation and just filling the documentation and several health and safety uh, safety inspectors in other words i have talked to them and uh, they have no time to be very honest to stop on each point and verify genuinely that things are okay like if they take a housekeeping but in genuinely housekeeping is not there they take that unnecessary items are not there in that particular department but they take it's all okay what i mean is these are the lacking points uh, practically which we uh, truly need to work on uh, to get some benefits ultimately Uh, for a better implementation of health and safety system and yes uh, it's all game of practice practice and practice don't expect that your emergency response procedure or your uh, you know kind of uh, firefighting system will be 
effectively replying in case of emergency until you practice, until you have some practice drills, you know. That is why we have fire evacuation drill, emergency response drill, several drills are there. The reason is we want people to be practically sound. So action is real learning also, as I mentioned earlier. The more your people are doing practice and following safety regulations, they will be addicted. You know, they'll be habitual. And yes, same like quality is a habit and same like we try to make that safety is a habit. And for that practice, I have given one slogan whenever we sign any project with any company, especially consulting project, uh, to develop health and safety management system as per Saudi Aramco or as per international standards, like ISO 45001, what we try to implement one slogan, be the safety manager of your own area. You are a welder, you are a painter, you are an excavator, wherever you are working, accept the ownership that your area, your life, first of all, your responsibility. You need support, we are there. You need some advices, we are there as an advisor even. But ultimately, your safety is your responsibility. And uh, to be very honest, this slogan, uh, even though it's difficult to implement because sometimes it's hard to convince people. You get, you get uh, negative people, you get positive employees, all mindsets are there. But the moment you start implementing and the people accept the ownership, your job day by day will be more easier because they have realized their life their area, their department, first of all, they have to manage uh, practically all the, even the risk assessment and several, like work permit system, you know. They are the one making sure that, uh, first of all, they are doing risk assessment, they are doing hazard recognition. And then, of course, they are getting your support if something lacks, you know, in between. It's not like always the safety officer is there and filling all the documents. And the other department, they always believe safety is all, only the responsibility of safety department. This is a terrible misconception in the market that safety is the responsibility of only the safety leadership or the safety team, actually. That is not the case. Everyone is responsible for safety. That is, that is the reason we start from HR. The moment they are hiring new employees in the offer letter or in the employment agreement, we truly encourage them to write some terms, kind of responsibilities. Mr. Welder, Mr. Engineer, Mr. Electrical Engineer, you are also responsible for safety. You have to make sure the right set of PPs you are waiting before you start your job. You're responsible to make sure to get the permit, or, you know, to make sure the permit is issued. You, you are responsible not to work without proper, uh, you know, uh, like uh, area to be isolated and make sure you, you ensure all safety regulations are well implemented before even you start the project. So what you are trying to do from the start, you are making them responsible in writing. And the moment they are signing and they are the new employee and you awarded him a job or kind of contract, they'll happily inshallah accept your safety system rather than you hire them. And within three months, they became addicted with the same culture might be a safest culture, might be a bad culture or unsafe culture, you know. Once they'll be addicted to any sort of culture, accordingly, they'll start, uh, you know, responding to different queries or uh, against different activities. They'll start responding accordingly. So don't let your employees to be addicted with unsafe culture. Let me give you, just for your motivation, one more example. In one of the company, uh, our project was just gap analysis. They don't want to use us to develop or restructure or you know redesign the system. What they want is just whatever the system is implemented, uh, prepare a gap analysis report or kind of risk assessment of each area, each activity, each process. And we just want to see where we are standing at this stage. And uh, uh, within three, four days, uh, we have to complete that project. So the moment, uh, I still remember the moment I went to the printing section and a lot of uh, uh, terrible smell because of thinner ink retarder and certain toxic chemicals and ventilation was really poor. But the drastic point was uh, three guys I found there and one is, uh, uh, one was the Filipino, you know, 
the most organized people you give them system and they start following but they will not do anything other than your system requirements you know you guided them three steps they'll be performing only three steps and the way you guided they'll be performing the way it is uh, you know but that filipino i noted he was wearing niosh approved air purification respirator which is uh, of course expensive you know comparing to the disposable mask or something like that and the other two guys i noted one is not wearing the mask at all and the third one is wearing only disposable mask the disposable medical mask in other words and i asked the gentleman do you have friendship with safety department i asked to the filipino guy and i still remember the golden words he mentioned look sir if company doesn't care about my life does not mean i should start killing myself i know this smell is terrible for my my lungs and it can kill me you know more faster than anything so i am here for my family not for this company only i am here for myself for my family so my life is my responsibility so i purchased this niosh approved respirator because i am the knowledgeable worker so i purchased it by paying from my own pocket because my life is not that much cheap like 500 real or 700 real my health my life is much much more expensive and i i truly realized even though later on we awarded that uh, gentleman you know with certificate with some cash award and we made him kind of a role model now the the terrible phenomena to the other side i asked the gentleman why you are not wearing the mask you know because it is uh, really dangerous working without mask in a toxic environment and i still remember the statement and that made me speechless i'm telling you i'm a pretty straightforward person so i have no shyness to accept he made me speechless he mentioned sir where were you before 10 or 12 years no my mind my body is addicted with this toxic environment and even friday is a terrible day for me that is why i am very straightforward i am telling you with this water bottle the label is water inside i take thinner because fire friday is a killing day for me so i drink thinner because my mind my body is fully addicted otherwise uh, friday would be terrible for me you know and i don't care whoever want to take any action let them take i don't care because i am fully addicted same like the chain smoker you know like if uh, uh, just uh, let's take an example of sadara like tomorrow to onward if you create a policy from today to onward nobody is going to smoke even a single cigarette you are talking to the chain smokers and you made a clear policy like smoking policy not a single cigarette will come into the territory and nobody authorized to smoke even in designated smoking area nobody is going to smoke just imagine what would be the reaction especially of the chain smokers i'm sure they will leave sadara but they'll not quit smoking because their mind is addicted with nicotine same way that gentleman was addicted with inner thinner smell ink smell a lot of other mixing even you know mixing of certain chemicals and that more uh, uh, pleasant kind of smell he is enjoying every day and he's addicted and uh, trust me it made me speechless how come we like you have a safety manager you have safety officers every day they are visiting we are just gap analyzer or risk assessors we just came maybe uh, after one year maybe two years you you call us as a third eye if you don't call us that means uh, same similar mindset will be accepted every day because every day the safety officer is visiting how come he didn't highlight why you are not wearing mask why how come you can work without mask you know? but that gentleman is became addicted and now it's terribly impossible at some level to change him overnight if we going to try to change we are going to kill him same like if you stop chain smoker don't don't smoke even a single cigarette definitely their their response to your kind of orders would be not in your favor actually so that is why i am telling it all starts from the hr the moment they are hiring during the hiring process make sure you made clear all safety regulations 
the new employee have to follow, especially the specific job responsibilities, safety responsibilities, specifically to his own process or job even, or to department even. At the moment he will sign, inshallah, I'm sure uh, he's keeping in mind, you know, that I have signed. I'm responsible for my safety. I'm responsible to report any kind of near misses. I'm responsible to report any sort of unsafe conditions or unsafe acts even. I'm, I'm supposed to report if I need training that something is there and technically I'm not sound enough. So I have a right to talk to the relevant department. Please train me because my safety, my responsibility. But that kind of culture to create required a lot of practice, a lot of effective implementation. You know. And I call it sustainable imp implementation. Sometime I noted as an auditor, like today I audited one company. And then after one year, for the same company I'm going to audit. The logic says this company should have continually improvement process. If the one year before condition was not good enough, after one year, it should have some solid improvement. But if they are not at the similar stage and they are more bad than the previous year, that shows poor commitment, the poor safety culture, that the people are not accepting whatever the safety leadership is saying to them. And this is uh, horribly challenging, you know, because culture, uh, is, you can't change overnight. You can't change overnight. Yes. Several things you can implement overnight, but sustainability and maintainability would be the greatest challenges. I hope uh, it will help you to understand the value of practice, the genuine implementation and keeping it and making safety like a habit, daily habit, same like the quality. Quality must be our habit actually. It's not like only for the product. Quality means and everything. And same way, the safety means safety and everything. And just for your motivation, whatever activities or processes are going on, they have three stages, right? Before, during, and after. I repeat again, every process in the world have three domains or kind of stages, before, during, and after. Now you just need to evaluate for, let's take an example of welding. Before starting welding process, what are the safety requirements our employees have to follow and you have to implement? And the moment they will start welding, during the welding process, what things, what safety regulations they have to respect? And then once the welding project is done, how they are going to close up? And that means after the process, what are the safety regulations you have implemented? So filter all your regulations in three different domains, before, during, and after, for every activity, for every process of your business. And then see the uh, crystal clear picture that either you are weak uh, in before portion or during or after, where your employees are neglecting or having some lacking points, you know. Then accordingly, you start improving, inshallah, to that process. Now, regulations adopted by the ILO, as I mentioned, we have C-155, which is uh, relevant to Occupational Safety and Health Convention. It's a goal-setting policy for companies and, you know, several nations. And occupation safety and health recommendations like 1981 or R-164, this is kind of a supplement of C-155 and gives more guidance on how to comply with its policies. Now, as per ILO Article 1.6 and uh, Convention Number 155, what are the obligations or kind of responsibilities of an employer? Now, if you get uh, you get a scenario, and in the scenario he is talking about employer's responsibilities, then this is a great reference. You can see oh, what are the responsibilities of employer as per ILO in the scenario, either that responsibilities were being fulfilled by the employer, yes or no. If it is no, then you start highlighting the responsibility number this was not being fulfilled as per ILO. So the company employer or the owner of the company as per ILO article number 16, C155 must 
adhere and must you know uh, fulfill the following responsibilities so you start writing stories into your own words but in line with the scenario and in line with the solid reference actually because according to the question you need to link even though it's a open book you will get plenty of uh, knowledge and information you know like a knowledge bank even but how are you going to choose the diamond words and uh, writing into your answers because your target is to achieve 100% marks also so every technical point is equal to one one technical point the correct technical point is equal to one mark i repeat again whatever we are writing one technical point is equal to one mark that means we can't write anything irrelevant or unessential or the we can't make it uh, over uh, put over information which is not justifying our answer in line with the scenario or according to the question itself then uh, examiner have right not to give full marks actually that means our answer must be pretty straightforward uh, as per the question in line with the scenario because scenario is kind of a real scene real issue real kind of challenge you know, which we normally facing day to day as a safety leader now what are employee responsibilities ensure that workplaces machinery equipment and work processes are safe and without risk to health that means providing safe working environment is the responsibility of employer an environment is containing what workplaces machinery equipment and work processes must be safe and without risk to health first of all that means no such terrible toxic fumes are coming from the processes or from the machine which are like if somebody is drilling and dust is coming outside so it should not go into the lungs actually that means we have to provide a safe work system you know now as an employer ensure that chemical physical and biological substances and agents are without risk now we have a biological uh, monster kind of a coronavirus now how many new policies you have implemented the new regulations starting from the entry point within sadara you know what thing you are worried for and the person is wearing mask and you know he is vaccinated yes or not how are you going to make sure in which area he can't go and still you are guiding him through the induction program to make sure the safe distance even is vaccinated even is wearing mask and so on so according to the current regulations or as per minister of health of saudi arabia or as per who you are incorporating some of the further regulations and implementing and putting in practice actually and that is your responsibility as an employer that means top management commitment is critically important now and also according to it we have to provide protective measures which need to be taken provide adequate protective clothing and equipment to provide risk of accidents or adverse health effects so it is illegal that a filipino guy purchase one niosh approved respirator from his own pocket because this is the clear responsibility of the employer to provide personal protective equipment but the suitable one technically sound not the misfit one or not the inappropriate now another responsibility of employer which we already discussed in the fill in the blanks if you remember that everybody is responsible for health and safety but most of the responsibility lies with the employers to provide what the safe place of work now safe place just imagine how much place you have think about sadara how many projects are there how many uh, covered land you have for office buildings your residential compounds so safety is not only on the job even off the job you 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 just need to make sure you know wherever especially the working places are uh, involved it's quite safe enough safe place of work safe plant and equipment 
I mean, you are talking about safety, but the forklift has already expired. The crane is already expired. It can, it is designed for one ton and you are putting, you know, pressure to lift 1.5 tons. So make sure the safe plant and equipment is there. Safe, that means it's, it's a game of design also. So safety starts from the design. The plant and equipment have to be designed in a way that 90% safety is incorporated during the design phase of that plant and equipment. Like in one of the projects, I went to Michigan State, uh, USA, just for what? To ensure that a machine is going to be safer all the way, like producing high quality products in a safe manner, no hand injuries, all the safety features are incorporated, including safety sensors, devices, rather than the machine is coming from USA to uh, Saudi Arabia, then I started risk assessment and found plenty of gaps. So why not I go there and make sure the manufacturer or the supplier, he is incorporating and you know inbuilt safety is there in the design phase. And it must be our effort, you know, because prevention is better than cure. Several industries are facing terrible issues, like they purchase machines maybe from Korea, maybe from China, maybe from Germany, maybe from America with several brands, names, high tech, globally acceptable, but still some of the design features as per your industry requirements are missing. As per your environmental conditions, they are not fit to. So here you required a research and development of officer or kind of uh, expert actually, who will suggest like we as a safety practitioners, we will guide about safety requirements. Oh, we can sensorize the area also. No, 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 somebody can go for suicidal attempt. So let's cover the machine from the top also. But a manufacturer will not think the way we are, uh, you know, because according to our culture, we have to bear in mind what things, like expect the unexpected. And accordingly, our effort should be in the plant and equipment to ensure that intentional, I repeat again, intentional or unintentional, human errors are also preventable. So the safe design of plant and equipment. And then of course the safe use, safe, better maintenance, because maintainability is a very critical challenge because mostly we ignore preventing maintenance plans, you know. Safe systems of work, like the procedures, the SOPs, the kind of warning signs, policies, our meeting minutes, our management review meeting, and several kind of things, you know, all comes under our PTW system, our internal training plans, our auditing system, our gap analysis, kind of data analysis procedures, our first aid, facilities, our firefighting system, chemical management system, you know. And most importantly, ensuring the right person for the right job, the right competence level is there. So competence enhancement tools are also implemented because we are talking about safe systems of work and it can only possible through training, supervision and competency of staff. Like you have safe place of work, you have safe plant and equipment and safe system of work is also there. But imagine if you don't train. And I personally noted, sometimes we just take signatures and training is done. Because the project manager or the operation manager, he needs people immediately. No time for induction. We are paying them for every minute. So we want to save time and also the cost. But we are ready to kill them, by the way. <laughs> because if they're not trained according to your plant, according to your safe system, according to your the way you implemented your SOPs, if you don't, if you don't train them, be ready, the probability has gone up for accidents, you know. That is why training, supervision, and competency of staff is all required for all above three points, you know. Now, as per Article 10, 
प्रीवियस वर्ड आर्टिकल सिक्स ने रेलेवेंट टू सी वन डबल फाइव बट आर्टिकल टेन ऑफ रेकमेंडेशन वन सिक्स फोर also highlighting few more responsibilities of employer like provide and maintain work places machinery and equipment and use working methods that are safe give what necessary instruction training and supervision and application to use of health and safety measures also uh, as an employer you are responsible to introduce organizational arrangements relevant to activities and size of undertaking and also provide ppes and clothing without charge to workers without charge to workers ensure that work organization particular working hours and rest breaks does not adversely affect occupational safety and health now take reasonably uh, practical measures with a view of eliminating excessive physical and mental fatigue oh this mental fatigue might be you been never thought about it but let me just highlight like you have some foundational employees like labor employees in other words and you have 12 hour shift at your project site like 6 to 6 like 6 at 6 they have to be on site and 6 pm they are authorized to leave so 12 hour shift is there but it's not 12 hours to reach 6 o'clock at site they are waking up maybe at 4 o'clock so add those 2 hours also because they are not enjoying the sleep you know and think about the travel time also up and down then think about if you are not providing let's take an example the lunch or the breakfast or something like that so they have to cook think about socially they have to talk to their family members maybe one hour is gone there think about entertainment segment they have to enjoy some time with their maybe with their laptop with mobile or with their friends also So it's not twelve hours, but if a person is working like and spending sixteen or seventeen hours, and the rest of the hours is trying to sleep and you know getting ready again next day on the job, so mental fatigue is not only that he will be drugging or you know drinking or smoking or something like that. even sleeping disorder is one of the terrible phenomena which we mostly ignore in our risk assessment also like you go back and check your risk assessment register and see either it is uh, separately highlighted the risk mental fatigue and what are the controls like the existing controls are they enough if not what Uh, further controls you truly need to implement or it is not ever discussed or you know evaluated through risk assessment any how keep up to date with scientific and technical knowledge to comply with the above is a game of continual scientific research and knowledge that is why even in sadara you talk to your it department you talk to your uh, technical departments and the c how much new technologies maybe artificial intelligence maybe at some process a robotic technology could be introduced just double check and see how many latest technologies based on your knowledge and research especially scientific research you are bringing inside because you don't want to kill human so for from high hazardous processes the world is trying to eliminate human capital what they need is the machines inside even though it is another reason to create unemployment but still the world is ready for it the reason is we don't want to kill in high hazardous processes we don't want to kill our employees that is why human are not no more the first line of defense in non normal operations but in normal operations kind of normal processes still we can rely on human beings you know. now workers responsibility is not like only the employer even the worker we the workers also responsible 
as per article 19 of uh, c155 that also places obligations on worker expanded in r164 as follows take reasonable care of their own safety that of the other people comply with safety instructions and procedures we are responsible to comply with safety instruction and procedures use all safety equipment properly so why don't you just copy paste in their employment agreement or in offer letter you know from the start from the day one that you you are responsible to take reasonable care of your own safety and even to the others and comply with safety instruction and procedures use all safety equipment properly report any situation that they believe could be a hazard or which they cannot themselves correct no report any work related accident ill health so these are the workers responsibilities but not yet finished few more are there article 19 of c155 states every worker must be must be given a decade information on actions he the employer has taken to ensure health and safety also given the right to the necessary training in safety and health and i noted you know as a training institute several employees sometimes they are crying the company is uh, putting training cost on their salary accounts they are not paying from there you know so they are bound to pay it back to the company whatever training cost is there and also company making them bound to go for this training several companies i noted while this is the employee's responsibility to provide required induction training and some sort of uh, job specific training you know but anyhow everywhere we have uh, some uh, good practices sometimes bad practices so is that is uh, why the world still needs a lot of improvements now given the right to the necessary training in safety and health consulted by the employer on all matters of safety and health relating to their work so as an employee i am fully empowered to say no to any unsafe act or any activity or process where i believe my life could be on risk if pps are not sufficient or my training i am not prepared well or the jsa i don't understand or the math statement are not good enough or my technical knowledge for this particular process is misfit i need further trainings but company is putting pressure to complete that activity so i have empowerment to say no but how to say no this is another or when to say no is another way to train our employees you know given the right to leave a workplace that he has reason to think presence an imminent and serious danger to his life or health and not be compelled to return until it is safe especially for confined spaces we truly have to make them empowered whenever they believe there is any sign of unsafe condition just please come out you are fully fully empowered to save yourself the role of uh, enforcement agencies even though no harmonized global standards are there but country specific agencies may include health and safety enforcement agencies fire authority insurance companies imagine if the accident graph god forbid of any company is going up and think about the fire think about the fire kind of you know uh, kind of incidents or the fire system is not good enough so think about the fire insurance companies of course they'll raise the money they will not accept the same contract you know and if uh, more fire incident to a company they'll raise their cost because ultimately insurance companies they will try level best not to face not to see any fire incidents in any company they have signed the contract and enjoying the money every month or every year you know from the same company and also police may be involved in enforcing health and safety law in some countries like for covid 19 implementation of uh, disposable mask or safe distance our ministry of health, health uh, took a lot of support from ministry of interior means all police they are fully responsible and authorized 
to implement and enforcing the laws relevant to COVID-19. So let's talk about the consequences of non-compliance. Breach of health and safety legislation is usually a criminal offense. Leading to enforcement action could be improvement or prohibition or maybe prosecution. That means organization may be fined or individuals may be fined or imprisoned. So enforcement action and prosecution. In case of non-compliance, that is why several companies they have compliance department and under compliance department, they have several other departments including quality, health, safety, environment, you know, corporate social responsibility, even if it is a food safety, the food safety sector, you know. So they incorporate several departments under compliance department, or maybe uh, I noted several other names like business excellence department, business excellence department. Under that department, they create another organizational hierarchy model, you know and becoming all the departments under business excellence and then uh, start complying and start working and improving every day to different processes and areas. Now, other organization standards, we have uh, ISO, like International Standardization Organization, world largest developers of management standards, like 9001, quality management, so we, you know, these standards basically help us to give a very structured approach. Through those standards, if we benchmark and develop our system according to these standards, it would be even more easier to understand, more easier to implement. And most importantly, we can avoid over documentation if we go for IMS, we call it integrated management system. Like we're bringing, all standards and creating a system which integrate like one procedure complying the requirements of let's take a procedure like training procedure and there is a clause number for training so for 9001 14001 and even for 45001 even for 14001 even for iso 20001 and several other iso standards are there so we can bring them all together not only the iso we can benchmark our customer standards. This procedure is complying all those requirements of ISO standards and our customer defined standards, including legal standards, but make sure you know the reference. So these standards, even though are not law, but they are good management practice. They lead to worldwide common approach to good management. And once your system is ready, as per 9001, like quality management system is excellent, go for third party certification also third party auditing. And then uh, if everything goes fine, they would have no problem to issue you the ISO 9001 certificate or 14001 or ISO 45001 or 12100 safety of machinery. But that is kind of a guideline and it's not certifiable a certain level. Now, other international standards are ISO 45001, which is uh, occupational health and safety. Previously, it was OHSS 18001, but now they made the new name like ISO 45001, bringing under ISO series, and they are compatible. This standard is compatible with 9001 and 14001. So the best approach is go for IMS, Integrated Management System, and bringing all the standards together, make sure you know one procedure is complying the requirements of all three standards, so through this less documentation, more easier to certify, less uh, certification cost also, and uh, better understanding to the people that one SOP is uh, complying several requirements of different standards. Here. But it's required a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, maybe you need to hire a consultant or maybe if you have time sufficient to do all these things, it's up to you. Other sources of information, we can go to health and safety executive like UK, www.hsc.gov.uk. Occupational health and safety admin like USA, OSHA is there. We have European Agency for Safety and Health at Work like EU, OSHA, europa.eu.en, and WorkSafe Western Australia, commerce.org.org. WorkSafe, also we have from Australia. 
we have a group exercise an employee has been injured at work direct cost of the accident and indirect cost of the accident i'm opening this question to all of you and i'm expecting some of the answer from your side what do you think what could be the direct cost of that accident and indirect cost of an accident so let's talk about the direct cost first then we'll go to the indirect cost can you give any examples or the titles of direct cost an employee has been injured at work identify potential direct cost i think i think for the first of all the direct cost uh, some people they didn't follow the the procedure some people they use the the shortcuts they want to finish his job uh uh uh, they won't finish uh, fastly or something like that. You're absolutely right. Okay. So what is the what is the cost actually? The cost to the company or to the injured person or especially the company. You know? The company. I think the company. The they will lose the the guy who get the injury and also you know this is the the reporting and RCI implementing everything. This one, this is uh, can be cost, uh, yeah, and, all, and and also and also some and also if the people get injured, maybe they need uh, medical or need or uh, going to the hospital. Yeah, this is Excellent. also Excellent. can be cost. Any any other opinion, please? Anyone else? Also, it can uh, break the record for the company for uh -huh. okay. so. Excellent. And an indirect cost, please. Any examples of indirect cost? Because we have direct cost and we have indirect cost. Uh, uh, yes, regarding the indirect cost, uh, it falls under the uh, the time allocated for the investigation and. Uh, um, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, when you come to recruit some people to come and participate also in, in the investigation and, and uh, I don't know, I think I think only the uh, the investigation time and the downtime and uh, coming absolutely. And also your good will go down and uh, 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 sometimes you penalize. Sometimes the project stack and we, we are reducing customers also. So plenty of indirect costs. And, you know, we call them tangible, intangible. You know, direct costs is still kind of a tangible cost. We can see, observe, oh, how much cash is going because of this accident in medical treatment and first aid and, you know, consuming time and all that. But in indirect costs, same like, you know, we have uh, root causes and underlying root causes. So here we have indirect costs with plenty of uh, other elements, including the goodwill cost, the most important one, because the market reputation uh, in the market, the company's reputation is one of the greatest asset. Here. So this is all about 1.2. We have discussed uh, several uh, things about ILO and also the employees' responsibilities and employees' responsibilities. And most importantly, what action could be taken against organization breaking health and safety law. So that was all about 1.2.